everybody. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We're going to give it just a couple minutes and allow people to jump on. And we're going to tour the zoo today. So hang tight just a few minutes. Enjoy the lovely view. And we'll start our tour in just a minute. Feel free to comment, say good morning, tell us your name, where you're from. All right, good morning everyone, my name is Kat. I am the Animal Welfare and Behavior Manager here at San Antonio Zoo. And a lot of you have been asking for different animals to see, you've been asking for a tour of the zoo, and you just really want to engage and see what we're doing here. So I'm stepping away from behind the camera and jumping out in front today so that I can answer a lot of those requests. And we're going to walk the zoo. We're just going to go on a little tour this morning. We're going to check out the animals, we're going to see the staff, we're going to visit with people, and I'm going to keep you guys in the loop. What do you say? Uh, feel free to ask questions, comment. Uh, we'll answer those as best we can as we go along. But pop on, say hi, tell me a joke. All right, let's go. <laughs> So this front entrance of our zoo is called Pride Plaza. And what I really like about our zoo is that as soon as you come in, you immediately are engaged by different species of wildlife. So we have our flamingos that are over on the right side, which we just did a flamingo Facebook Live, so you'll have to uh, check in there. But we also have some primates. So we have two different types of rough lemurs. We have our red rough lemurs and black and white rough lemurs. Also, hi mom and dad. <laughs> so this is our red rough lemur exhibit. We're not gonna spend too much time at any one exhibit. I'll try and give you maybe my favorite fact or a little piece of info as we stop. Um, but that way we can get through some of the zoo. We don't have a huge zoo, but we have a lot to see. So we might actually have to cut this into two or even three sessions just to get through the zoo and not have it be too, too long. So let's jump to the next lemur exhibit. Over here we have our black and white rough lemurs, Sahi and Zaza. We are going to do a lemur Facebook Live in the next week, so stay tuned for that. Uh, they are choosing to be inside right now, so we do spend a lot of time checking out the weather and really planning ahead and making sure that all of our animals have choice of if they want to be inside or outside and that they always have an opportunity to avoid the weather if it's going to be too bad. So here they're choosing to be inside right now, but some cool things you can see on exhibit are actually pieces of enrichment. And it's the blue and yellow toy in the back and the orange toy over on the right. And those are called puzzle feeders. And it's just something that stimulates natural behavior and takes the animals a little bit more effort to get to all of their food. So we're gonna keep moving forward. Oh, great. A most popular animal or exhibit. You know, I think that depends on who you ask. Um, every different department is going to tell you that they have their favorite animals and their favorite exhibits, but we definitely get a lot of requests. Obviously for the hippos, Timothy is a big star right now, which his birthday is coming up soon. So you guys will have to tune in on Tuesday. He's turning five years old, so we're going to have a big birthday celebration on Facebook Live that day. Um, elephants are really popular, so you have your mega fauna, those big animals that everybody knows of. But really, we have some pretty amazing animals here that aren't quite as big or aren't quite as uh, well known. 
And if you scroll back on our Facebook page, a lot of our Facebook Lives are actually showcasing some of our stories that you wouldn't necessarily see if you were here as a guest. A lot of behind the scenes work, a lot of conservation efforts, um, and a lot of passion that's coming from different departments that don't always take care of those big mega fauna, those, the bears and the elephants, uh, the lions, the tigers, all of those um, animals that you think of in a zoo. So we have some people that are really talking about uh, their passion, like aquarium and our reptile department, our bird department. There's just so many amazing animals that we have here, and it's not just what you think of. In this exhibit, we have two of our American black bears. This is Kashka and Molly. And they are not related, but they've been together pretty much their entire lives. They were both rescued and they enjoy every aspect of this exhibit. This is actually a really amazing exhibit because it's so large and there are so many different types of things in here. You've got the pool, you've got the rock work in the front, but it might be difficult to tell all the way in the back. There's a cave back there. Uh, there's steps, there's climbing structures, there's foliage, there's grass. There's everything in here. It's a really amazing exhibit and these bears utilize it to its fullest. And this is just one of those first three exhibits that you see as soon as you come into the zoo. So it's like, bam, in your face, you've got some amazing animals. You've got the birds, you've got the lemurs, you've got the bears. Really, it's a great experience as soon as you come through the gates. Any more questions? Not yet. All right, let's keep walking. Now this species in here, this is my favorite species my very favorite. This one, mammal, smart, motivated. <laughs> this is Kim. <laughs> this is one of our amazing animal care specialists, Kim, and she is one of our mammals, one keepers. That means that she cares for a variety of animals, everything from those lemurs and the bears that we're talking about now uh, to the primates. She is going to be featured soon because we're going to be talking tamarins. All those tiny, cute, little, bright yellow monkeys that you see when you come here, they're her favorite. So she's the best one that's going to talk about that. Uh, but this is one of our bear exhibits, and right now this is what we're doing. So this is really what I wanted to share with you today, is that I know that we're going through a hard time right now, and this is a whole new type of lifestyle for everybody. But there are some people that are still out there and working, they're essential staff, they're employees that we really rely on, everybody that's working at grocery stores and hospitals and everything like that. But zoos, anything that cares for wildlife or humans, uh, nursing homes, things like that, uh, that's really important. And I just want to share with you guys what we're doing. So I'm here every day, I'm helping, I'm keeping you guys engaged and working with our social media team and our marketing department to make sure that you're always in the loop and really feeling connected with our zoo. But these guys are the true heroes here because they're showing up every day, they're still giving 100% of their time and effort to these animals. And that's something that never changes, outbreak or not. So we're here, we're doing it. Again, please chime in and answer, uh, ask some questions that I can answer for you. Uh, my name is Kat, I'm one of the managers here at the zoo, and we've really been working hard to share a lot of our stories with you. And today we're just gonna do a little tour throughout part of our zoo so that you guys can ask questions and see what it's like being here. It's kinda lonely actually, it's, it's very quiet, which is different, because typically we are open 365 days a year, and being closed multiple days in a row, uh, that's, it's interesting, it's a new experience for all of us. Uh, a lot of people have asked about the animals. How are the animals doing? Do they, are they lonely? Do they know that we're not there? Uh, they probably do notice that there's less people, but less people isn't necessarily good or bad. I would not say that they are lonely because their routine is still the same. As I said, our animal care specialists are here every day and they are working 100% of their time and effort here taking care of these animals and making sure that we are on the same page as we always are. We're giving 100% world-class care. So back here, we have our Komodo dragon. I guess we can go up to the glass. Let's check it out and see if they're out. Uh, now, really cool thing that we just did last week, our director of ectotherms, he brought out one of our baby Komodo dragons and we took him for a walk. His name was Max. And that's a nice long video that you guys can check out from earlier in the week. I think it was on Tuesday. Um, but again, if you check out our Facebook page and you just scroll through, 
you can really get a chance to see all of the animals that we've featured so far. This exhibit is amazing. There is so much plant life and foliage, and there's a lot of thought and effort that gets put into exhibits when they're being made, when they're being renovated, when they're being uh, redesigned, or really just spruced up to be a little prettier or a little more uh, naturalistic to the animals that live in them. Different animals require different things, so this is pretty cool exhibit. We're gonna keep moving now. We do have a couple questions. Great. Um, Bring on the question. How Mel is doing, you know what? Brittany's two-year-old, I'm gonna show you. We're gonna go check out Mel next. How about that? What else? Uh, do snakes ever get into yes, actually, sometimes snakes do. The great thing about a zoo is that we have, I mean, look at this. If you can kind of scan through here and, and look at the space and what it looks like, also knowing that there is food coming every day to all of these habitats and there are people here, there's enrichment, there's all kinds of fun things. If I were a wild animal, if I were a raccoon or a possum or a skunk or a snake or a lizard, I would want to live here. <laughs> and you will notice that as you walk through not just our zoo, but a lot of zoos around the country is that wildlife just flocks to the zoo because it's such a cool and easy place to live, right? That's the goal is that the life is a minimal stress and easy to survive, and that's what it's like here at a zoo. Uh, so we're going to check out the gibbon. Uh, Gail would like to know a little bit more about uh, our black bears and their behavior, what they were doing back there. What were they doing back there? I think they were foraging. Oh, they were foraging, yes. <laughs> so they're very interactive with each other, and actually today is a really nice day. It's a nice break from yesterday, which was a real feel of 95 degrees and about 800% humidity. It was miserable for everybody. But today it's actually in the 60s and it's really nice. I'm a desert rat at heart, so I've got my jacket on. Uh, but these animals, they don't react negatively to those sudden Texas changes. They are adaptable and flexible. And those bears are probably enjoying a lot more of their habitat today than they did yesterday, which really gives them a nice variety of life. So here we have our gibbons. We also have Asian small clawed otters in this exhibit. So we have four white cheek gibbons, two males and two females, and the two adults are a mating pair, and that does include Mel. A lot of people ask about him because he is definitely one that engages with our guests a lot. So he is the largest uh, black colored gibbon. The one that's swinging up top is actually our young male. Oh no, that's our young female. <laughs> Up here in the front is our young male. This is Harrison. So Harrison and Henley are the kids to Maya and Mel. Let's see where Mel's hanging out. Mel has a tendency to uh, swing back and forth throughout the exhibit and almost follow people. And he's really great and sometimes he likes to uh, mark his territory on people. So usually people get really engaged with him. So here's some of the behaviors that you see are uh, playing. They're, being, they're very social. Primates are extremely social animals. And play behavior can be just that. It can be play, but it can also be part of socializing. It can be part of establishing dominance. It can be part of learning and growth, just like it is for us, for people. Uh, one thing that I hear a lot when I walk through the zoo is, oh my gosh, look at these monkeys. They are crazy. But these are not monkeys, these are apes. This is actually the only ape species that we have here at the zoo. And the easiest way to tell the difference between a monkey and an ape is that monkeys have tails and apes do not. And these guys do not have tails, as you can see. They do, however, have really long limbs. And what's really cool about these guys is that they do something, their movements are called brachiation. They brachiate. So those long arms you can see are used for swinging. They are really um, masters of the monkey bars, much better than I could ever be. Oh yes, I am mic'd and my camera woman is not. So I will try my best to remember to repeat all the questions that you are asking. That way you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, so another cool fact about the gibbons uh, is their coloration. So you can see here, uh, there is a blonde and a black colored gibbon. 
So when they're born, they're born blonde. And they're born blonde, from what we understand, is to camouflage. Their moms, adult females, which is Maya up there on top, she would have the baby and then the baby would hold on to mom's belly or on her back or somewhere on her body for an extended period of time. And that's how they would move around and they would nurse and they would be cared for by mom. And the best way to do that safely is to blend in and almost go unnoticed. So babies are born blonde and then roughly around two years old, they start to get this real almost dirty looking color and they turn black. But if they are a female, when they become mature, they will turn blonde again. And that happens around seven, maybe eight years old. But if they are male, they will stay black for the remainder of their life. So just because you see three black gibbons in here and one blonde does not mean that there are three males. Okay, do you have a couple questions? Sure, uh, bring on the questions. What is their diet and where do they come from? Their diet is a variety of primate chows. So, uh, basically, if you think of things like dog food and cat food that you would feed to your pets at home, um, that would give all of the nutrients and all of the vitamins and minerals and necessary food products that they would need to keep them happy and healthy. Uh, in addition to all of that chow, we give them a lot of leafy greens. We give them a variety of produce, so fruits and vegetables. They do enjoy bananas. I know it's such a stereotype, uh, but they enjoy bananas, uh, different types of fruit, apples, sweet potato, uh, things they don't like, probably uh, tomatoes. Anybody out there hate tomatoes? <laughs> That's usually not a favorite of most animals, along with uh, most green things. So things like cucumbers or broccoli, those tend to be least favorite food items. We do have another question. Um, do keepers interact with the gibbons and what type of training do we do? Keepers absolutely interact with the gibbons uh, and they do a lot of training and enrichment. Some of the interactions that they do is really training focused and a lot of the training is about um, husbandry. So husbandry behaviors are naturalistic behaviors that we work with the animals to get them to cooperate with us in their own health care. That means that they can participate in voluntary blood draws, injections, uh, body exams, anything like that that would help minimize any form of stress. So if you think about taking a pet to the vet, I know uh, that I have friends that talk about, oh man, every time we get in the car and we're going to the vet, my dog just knows and they get seemingly stressed out. So imagine if you had the chance to go and desensitize your, your pet to the vet and you, they got to see them and going to the vet's office was just a fun time. It was really reinforcing and rewarding and they got a chance to um, enjoy that experience. Then it would make that trip a lot easier. So similar, to what we do with husbandry training here. So <laughs> I can't get over their interaction. <laughs> they are so funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> and forgive us, <laughs> we are working with some new equipment today, so we are <laughs> trying to figure it all out together. Uh, <laughs> which, since we knew that we were gonna walk through the zoo, we uh, got a phone stabilizer and we're, we're trying to figure this out. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Now, we did do a Gibbon Facebook Live um, about two weeks ago, and it was a really neat experience because we gave a very unique point of view where we went inside the exhibit. And one of our animal care specialists, Jamie, shared all of her fun facts about them. So definitely scroll back down and check those guys out. But we are gonna keep moving or we're gonna spend all day doing this one Facebook Live. And we've got more. We have Zen Zoo Yoga at 10.30 and we have another Facebook Live at two o'clock today, so don't forget to check those out. This exhibit, this is the Langer exhibit. We have two female Langers in here, and talk about another exhibit where the animals utilize every inch of space. They hop and jump and swing, and it is so fun to watch these two. And those, look at those tails. You can see them hanging down. Those tails are the length of their entire body stretched out. They also look like they have these real cute little mutton chops, so they're really fun to watch. Uh, we have this great photo, maybe we can find it and share it, uh, of one of our girls sitting right here in the front just licking the glass because there was some enrichment put up by the windows. And it's just that great uh, face of flat up against the glass. It's pretty hilarious. 
But you can see as they jump and move around, they use that tail for balance. It's not prehensile, so they don't necessarily swing from just their tails, but it does help them in holding on and giving them balance. Now these girls have the ability to go way up high in their exhibit, so from up, up top they can actually see a whole new perspective of animals and people and what's going on in the zoo, which is a lot of fun and that's definitely enriching in itself. One of my favorite facts about these uh, types of monkeys, so these ones are monkeys because of those long tails, is that when they have a baby, their babies are bright orange. Hello. They came up to say hi. Look at that face. So sweet. Now if you take a look at their hands, this is so cool. They have hands very similar to ours. They have those opposable thumbs they use to hold on to food and grab on to all of the enrichment and uh, the different branches and ropes in their exhibit. We are definitely going to do a Facebook Live because we could spend all day just talking about this species. So again, I want to answer all of your questions, but I almost can't spoil it for my animal care staff that uh, are going to want to share all of their favorite facts about their animals. So I want to make sure that uh, I throw out a few fun things as like a teaser. We just want to tease you a little bit and uh, keep you engaged with us and keep you checking out all of our Facebook Lives. They're uh, from Asia. Oh, the question was, where are they from? <laughs> They're from Asia. <laughs> what kind of langers are they? These are Francoise langers. It's spelled kind of funny. Here's their little sign. All right, let's move on. Now, I'm going to skip walking through our cat grottos only because one of our animal care specialists, Caitlin, just did a nice Facebook Live about all of the animals in our cat grottos exhibit. Uh, so that is this area over here to the left. We also have some really cute rock squirrels hanging out up top. And we do have our reptile house as you walk through the zoo. So in the mornings, what's really cool is if you come uh, over the summer, especially when we open extra early for all of our members, which if you're not a member, you should definitely become one. It's definitely worth it. But what you might notice are these signs on these doors for a little while first thing in the morning. And it's, sorry, we're closed. And this is it's funny because they're reptiles. Uh, but this sign means that there are staff inside right now working with dangerous animals. We have staff that go through a long time, anywhere from three months to even a year of training to learn how to safely handle venomous snakes. So we do have venomous reptiles here at San Antonio Zoo and our staff does interact with them in order to give them the best care possible. And I'm working on a video so that I can share that with you all. Uh, and that's gonna be really exciting, but some of our staff in there uh, are working currently as we speak. So we are not able to go in because we wanna make sure that we stay safe and we keep the animals uh, where they need to be and keep the animal care staff that's inside working with them safe as well. But as soon as they take that sign down, that means that this building is open and it's free to go inside. So that's what that means if you ever come here and you see those signs up on the door. Hi, Matt. This is Matt. He works with our maintenance team. <laughs> you can go ahead, Matt. We don't want to interrupt anyone's day, but this is what I'm talking about, is that we have essential staff from all different departments that are here and really helping to keep the zoo operational and make sure that we can give the best quality care to our animals as possible. So as we walk this way, normally you would see some opportunities for snacks and drinks which I might have to find after this. I'm a little bit hungry this morning. Uh, we also have one of our gift shops. Now, just because that's not open right now and you can't come to the zoo right now and purchase something, you can check out our, our uh, website at sazoo.org and you have the opportunity to donate to our emergency fund, which is really helpful in helping us to secure a future for wildlife and continue to operate uh, with what we're doing, caring for all of the animals here. But you can also purchase uh, 
a couple of gift baskets. We have a few different gift baskets that are featured right now on our website, so you'll have to check those out. And they are on a special right now, and it's a perfect, maybe belated uh, Easter gift if you are looking for those last minute Easter baskets uh, for all of your friends and family. Uh, you can also adopt an animal. We have several species of animals that you can adopt, and when you do that, that donation goes right to our zoo, right back to all of our animals and all of our staff, and you get a really cute little plush of that animal. You get a certificate that's, congratulations, you adopted this animal. It's got your name and their name, and it has a little picture and a fun fact sheet about that animal that you adopted, so check that out. We're gonna keep walking here. Let's see, which way should we go? Somebody, somebody pick. We've gotta go left or right. This is the fork in the road that everyone comes to. <laughs> so the first person to comment, left or right, you're gonna make the decision on where we go. To the right is Amazonia. To the left, not Amazonia. <laughs> we have jaguars to the left. We have primates to the right. Ooh, right it was. All right, Amazonia. Now, right here in front, right in the fork in the road, we have two of my personal favorite animals. We have Tess and Tootsie, and these are spider monkeys, and they're really cute. And how I know I'm on their good side is if they squeak at me, which I have not heard. So, sad day. <laughs> But they're adorable. They have prehensile tails, so as they move around, you can actually see uh, they use technically five limbs. That tail, which makes them a monkey, acts as a fifth limb, and they can hang upside down just from that tail alone. They are definitely uh, specific to their staff and who takes care of them. They have their favorites, and whether they come inside or move around uh, really just depends on who's working with them that day. <laughs> So sometimes they, they wait it out. <laughs> all right, we're gonna move to the right. Bye monkeys. And yes, we all talk to the animals. I don't care what anybody tells you. Also, uh, camera woman, Sarah, watch your step. <laughs> so here we are going over into the Amazonia area and we have a variety of species of birds on either side of this bridge. This is definitely a pathway that a lot of people miss pretty often because it's sort of hidden and it's, it feels like it's off the beaten path a little bit. But over here in this area, we actually just hosted a Zen Zoo yoga session on the deck in here. But in here we have a variety of birds and I won't pretend like I know every species of bird, but we do have some really awesome roseate spoonbills. So they're the little pink birds with kind of the bright pink coloration on their feathers. And roseate spoonbills are often mistaken for flamingos just because they're pink. They do get their pink color from the same thing, the food that they eat, same as flamingos. However, they're much shorter and they are actually native here to Texas. So you can go down to the coast and you can see uh, roseate spoonbills. Now what's really cool is when they are hatched, they hatch all fluffy and white and they have feathers on their head but as they get older and they mature, they go bald. So bald is beautiful. Anyone out there, any, any bald people out there, just throw your name out, woo, bald. Uh, and bald is beautiful, especially in the roseate spoonbill world. And the males, sexually mature males, will actually have their head turn a variety of shades of teal and blue, and even a little bit of orange will pop up around their eyes. And that's, that's uh, very attractive to the lady spoonbills. They also have a flat bill that literally looks like two spoons and they close together and they use that to sift through food uh, and wade in the water and find everything that they eat. Now the bright pink or uh, uh, scarlet colored birds that you see in here are scarlet ibis. Really beautiful. We're gonna keep walking though because again, there's so much to talk about. So please ask the questions that you have this is an it. I'm sorry? Spoonbills get uh, a different type of chow again that is meant just for them. They uh, mostly get that. They get different types of shrimp and brine and krill and all of those items similar to the flamingos, uh, which we just did two 
uh, Flamingo Facebook Lives this past week, so you'll have to check those out. Now this area is one that I think is often missed, and we'll just scan this really quick because again, I can't take this away from Kim. She's so excited to talk about these guys. These are her favorite. Uh, she even has a name tag that says Tamron Queen. So uh, that's really exciting for her. But these are a lot of our Tamarins. We have Golden Lion Tamarins. We actually have a white-faced Saki monkey in here. Look at her, isn't she cute? <laughs> we have Geldies monkeys. We have five Geldies monkeys in here. We have marmosets. They might be inside. Now these exhibits are really fun because the animal care specialists that care for them are always trying to rearrange and update them. And also, as cute as monkeys are, monkeys are gross. They pee all over the place. They wipe it on their hands. They rub it all over the things in their exhibit. And that's marking their territory. It's what they do. It's natural behavior, but it's pretty nasty. <laughs> In here, we actually have another mixed species exhibit. We have our howler monkeys and red rumped agoutis. So this is our family of howler monkeys. Howlers are so loud, the males make a call that can be heard miles away. It's pretty amazing. And the little agoutis that are, there's one down in the back. I don't know if you guys can see it on film. Uh, but agoutis are related to rodents. Well, they are rodents. They're related to capybara and even rats. Rodents are extremely smart. They have ever-growing teeth and they're constantly finding things to chew and destroy. So when we have mixed species exhibits like this, we have to be very thoughtful in the enrichment that we give and the diets that we offer as well. So we make sure that any species that live together, there's a, a very uh, significant thought process put into what can live together so that if they were to eat each other's food, it would still be very healthy and nutritious for all parties involved. <laughs> and we make sure that any enrichment that can go in can be enjoyed by everybody and that it's safe for all species involved as well. All right, so we will keep moving. And again, we have another fork in the road. <laughs> I'm not sure where to go, but I think actually we will stick to going left. Maybe we can go in and see if we can check out our bats. I don't know if we'll be able to see them because it is dark, uh, but we'll just do a quick run through. It's a place that a lot of people miss and we'll see if anyone's in there cleaning. How many animals do you have? The zoo has over 7,000 animals. It's a lot. It's a lot of animals. Um, in here, this is another part of our Amazonia. We have Ricardo, our ocelot, which by the way, we did a Facebook Live on him. And one of his trainers, Caitlin, got to uh, share some of his training and his behaviors, which was really cool. And you get a very, very cool view of him. So uh, check that out if you really wanna see him up close. We have a couple more howler monkeys over here, two girls that live together. We have some capuchin monkeys over on the right. We just celebrated Wiley's 20th birthday. And we did that on a Facebook Live as well. We've been busy here. <laughs> so I'm gonna pop in and I'm gonna see if we can view these bats. <gasps> Sarah's in bats today, which means there is nobody in there cleaning <laughs> because she's with me. So <laughs> we're gonna pop in and see how this looks on camera if you guys can see this is our bat exhibit these are Siba's short-tailed bats and in here alone which I don't actually think the number goes into the count of how many animals we have at the zoo total I think that we count bats as one but there are between it's I think it's something like 1184 on the dot bats that are in this enclosure and that's so amazing uh, and it's hard to see because up top if you can see my hand up top there's actually uh, what simulates a cave and they just group in huge numbers there they're really cute and we have national bat days coming up i believe it's next week so we're actually putting together a little video that we'll share for you so that you can see them a little up, uh, more up close and personal but these are fruit eaters 
and they can eat a lot of fruit every day. You can see they have cantaloupe, they have apples, they have bananas. Uh, we also do make a bat chow so that they get a variety of nutrients that they need. But you can see them in those clumps of bananas actually climbing into the banana. They are extremely messy. They have no table manners whatsoever. They just fly in, grab a face full of food, and fly out. It's actually kind of rude. <laughs> they don't seem to mind, though. And this habitat gets cleaned every day. And yes, the staff is inside that exhibit cleaning with those bats. And we've tried, but you know, it doesn't matter how many times you go in, you will never be Batman. All right, we're gonna keep moving. Any more questions coming up? Yes, we do have a question. When the zoo has the opportunity to adopt new animals, you get to name them? Ooh, that is a great question. When the zoo has an opportunity to adopt a new animal, do we name them or do they come with names? Both, sometimes. And it really depends. Uh, sometimes we will partner with other zoos. We partner with SSP, which is the Species Survival Program, and there will be breeding recommendations for different zoos to have animals come and go to different places, and that way they can be paired together. But not all animals like to be with other animals. So we got that question a lot with a few of our Facebook Lives is, are they gonna get a friend? There are a lot of animals that they don't want a friend. They are solitary and it would be unnatural to put them with other animals. But a lot of it is just individual personalities, just like us as people. Uh, different people like different people. So we definitely base everything that we do on individual personalities. However, some animals do come with a name <laughs> and we will keep the name. Sometimes the animals come with no name and we'll give them a name, but it also just depends on the animal too. Uh, if we have 200 fish that come in, I bet the aquarium department doesn't name every fish, but when you come, you can definitely point them out and name them whatever you like. <laughs> so in this habitat, we have jaguars. We have two adult jaguars, which this was actually the second Facebook Live that we did, so we might be due for another one. But we have an adult male and adult female, and this is a perfect example of, uh, no, you will not see them together. You will only see one or the other out at a time because they are solitary. Out in the natural environment, they would only come together to breed, and then they would separate again. So there is no history of staying together. Uh, the only time that you would see together, animals together, is if they've lived together their entire lives or out in the natural environment, siblings might stay together for up to about two years, but after that, they separate as well. So we have a male and a female, Balam and Arizona. The Facebook Live that we did featured Arizona and we had her birthday celebration uh, the following weekend. But in here, we have Balam. He's in here today and they do rotate in and out. They get a lot of different types of enrichment as well. We can walk over to where he is. Let's see if, um, it rained the other day and it got really muddy in here and he was playing in the mud. I walked by and he was just jumping right into it. So I'm sure his staff loved that the next day. Now, a lot of animals are more active about this time in the morning, which is why if you come to the zoo, usually morning time is a great time to come uh, because they will be in and out for husbandry. That is when our animal staff shifts the animals into their night houses or holding areas and we'll get outside and clean the exhibit and then we'll put out food, uh, breakfast items, enrichment, things like that. And then uh, put the animal back out into the enclosure and you can watch all of those naturalistic behaviors happen. You can watch them eat, but pretty quickly after that, they nap. That's natural. So a lot of people say, why are the animals always sleeping? The zoo's boring, they're always asleep. But sleeping is good. Sleeping is natural. And a lot of these animals will sleep some up to 22 hours a day. Talking to you lions. Uh, so hopefully you all are um, enjoying this time at home as the lions do and you're getting your rest. Any more questions?
Oh gosh. How much food does the zoo go for, go through in a day or a week? You know, I don't know the exact numbers on that. I can find out, but I know just for the hippos alone, it takes about a thousand dollars worth of food every month just to feed Timothy. He eats a lot. Um, so really there's so much food. It's so much food. I will have to talk to our nutrition center and maybe we can Facebook live our nutrition center. Hopefully they're watching. So they're getting nervous right now <laughs> that I'm going to put them on camera. Uh, but it's a lot of food. And right now we really are depending on all of you viewers at home to help us out to continue to get all of the food and enrichment and things that we need for our animals because we really do depend 100% on your donations and visitors. Uh, usually when guests come to the zoo, you can go inside, I'll keep talking. Uh, when guests come to the zoo, those ticket sales and um, all of the purchases of the toys and the gifts and the, <laughs> the treats the food items, anything like that, that's what helps to fund us and keep us operational. So right now being closed, we have literally lost 100% of our income. And you might have heard, unlike a lot of places, we do depend solely on that. That means that we have no governing uh, funding whatsoever. We do not receive funding from the city or any other governing agency and everything comes from you. That's why it is so important that we're asking any little bit helps and it's not just monetary. Monetary is the most helpful because we can put that into whichever area that is most needed right now. But even right now, all of our staff, we are here, we're working and even though the people that you see on Facebook Live are not wearing masks during that time, we are wearing masks after. So if you're somebody who's crafty and you're looking for a little project and you would like to make some masks to donate to the zoo, we would love that. And us as animal care people, we're fun. So um, this is mine. And it's real cute and it makes us happy. So if you have any fun, bright colors or animal prints, we will absolutely uh, welcome those because they can be reused and disinfected. Unlike some of the, the masks that we have, which we have to throw away every day. And we do try to focus on conservation regardless of what we do. Uh, so this is Africa Live building. I feel like you have some questions. What are some questions? Uh, Andrea would like to know what is your favorite animal? Oh, my favorite animal of all time or here at the zoo? I'll do both. Um, I, my favorite animal of all time are dogs. And I know that sounds weird because I work with a lot of exotic wildlife, but dogs are the best and you can take those home and they are actual good pets. <laughs> so I love dogs. I, they make me happy. They make my heart happy. I've rescued all of the pets that I've had and it just, there's true love happening at home every day. Uh, but I, I've never worked with polar bears and I would really love to work with polar bears. Here at the zoo, I don't even know that I could pick a favorite. I have favorite birds, I have favorite reptiles, I have favorite mammals, uh, so I'm gonna say people. I'll go with the safe choice. Um, I get to engage and educate and teach the staff, and my role here is to help to develop staff knowledge in animal training and animal care and welfare, and it makes me really happy. Uh, so right now I'm going to point out something that's kind of cool. We won't talk about it for too long because we're actually going to talk about it next week. But look how disgusting this water looks right now. Yesterday, Nelson, our aquarium manager, gave a really nice post about uh, the life support system and ozone. And up top you see three of our animal care specialists. And two of them just got out of this pool because we dive the hippo pool every week to try and keep that glass nice and clean and we pick up the mass amounts of natural debris that Timothy and Uma leave for us in this pool uh, and that helps keep our life support system operational and flowing nicely. Uh, so for a little bit of time after we dive, it'll look a little murky because they were just in there kicking everything around and pushing around all of that hay and Basically, the hay that's floating in here is, it's already been digested. We have a couple questions. Sure. Uh, Lindsay would like to know, do the keepers prepare the food for the animals or is there other staff that do it? 
Great question, Lindsay. Uh, there, the question is, do keepers prepare the food or do other staff do it? It's a combination of both. We have a nutrition center that comes in at 5 a.m. every day. I genuinely don't know how they do it. But every day they are here and they are creating diets for the entire zoo, loading those up into vehicles and carts and driving them down and delivering those diets so that when the animal care specialists come in and start their day, their diets are ready for them. But there are a lot of additions that the keepers make, so they add all of the greens into those diets. They add um, chow, any dry chows into those diets. So there's a lot of prep that goes into it even after the main, the main part of the diet comes down from the nutrition center. But it's a collaborative effort. We're going to walk and talk. How about that? Great question. Where can you make a donation? If you would like to donate, please visit our website. It's sazoo.org. And the first thing that's going to pop up is the option to click on our emergency fund. And you can press that button, and it'll walk you through all of the steps. All right. So we did do a Facebook Live with both Craig and Nelson from Ectotherms and Aquarium, where we talked about a lot of these enclosures. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll actually walk out the other side and we'll talk about a few more animals, but we will wrap this up kind of soon and hopefully you will all want to tune back in and we can do other parts of the zoo. Like I said, it's not a huge zoo, but there is so much to see that we can't possibly get through it on a Facebook Live in a day. But when we do open our doors back up, because we do miss you all and we really miss seeing your faces and watching everybody enjoy the animals and learn about wildlife, uh, when that happens again, you can come and you can enjoy the zoo in a day, but it's much better to take your time and enjoy it multiple days throughout the year, which is why becoming a member is so important. Oh, the donation thing. If you would like to donate, please visit our website. It's sazoo.org. And the first piece that is going to pop up <laughs> is the button to donate to our emergency relief fund. And any little bit helps. It doesn't matter if you're at home and you're going crazy and you're cleaning and you're finding change in the couch cushion. We'll take it. <laughs> All right. Let's see. We'll do a little loop up here. We'll stay in the front half of the zoo. And then maybe we can do this again on another day where we can visit the back half and then the top half where we've got all of our African animals. So in here we have, back from the brink of extinction, we have whooping cranes, which we just did a Facebook Live about a week and a half ago on our whooping cranes. We have a male and a female breeding pair in here. And you'll have to check out that Facebook Live because Pete did such an amazing job at sharing their story and the history and talking about how this species was near extinction and how San Antonio Zoo has put forth conservation efforts that are helping to bring this species back and keep them safe and secure a future for Whooping Crane. And I have to just give a shout out to Pete because after that, Pete retired. So Pete, we miss you. Happy retirement. So he's at home sleeping right now, probably, while we're all here working. <laughs> uh, are there any meet and greets with the animals? Are there any meet and greets with the animals? Once we open, yes. There are a lot of behind the scenes and interactive opportunities that you can take part in. One of them is our hippo behind the scenes. We have okapi behind the scenes, rhino behind the scenes. We have a flamingo mingle, which we can actually walk over that direction so you can see that area. We have a lot of things that you can do. We also have Lori Landing, and that space is actually open for guests to come in and out. You don't have to make reservations, but you can purchase nectar cups if you'd like to feed them. And then you can get some really cool pictures, especially the ones where birds are a little intimidating to people, and they fly under their hand, and then you get that great shot of the really terrified face. Those are the best. And if you have any of those, send them to us. Tweet them at us, tag us on Facebook, go look at this face. Uh, we could definitely use some uplifting online memes and jokes. I am a big fan of dad jokes, so if you have any, share them with me. <laughs> I feel like I have some good ones and I didn't prepare for them, but 
in here, this is called Big Lake. So what's really cool is Big Lake is really a central space for the zoo. And across the way, I don't know if you can see the Pelican Pier area, they're all gonna tell you about what they think about being on camera right now. None of them prepared. <laughs> so across the lake is actually where we were walking through Amazonia, where we saw the bats. Oh, it's not us. Good, they're coming back. <laughs> I almost got offended, but. You can probably pick it up on the mic, these flamingos. And again, like the spoonbills, they get their coloration from the food that they eat. Have we had any hatchlings for the whooping crane? Have we had any hatchlings for the whooping crane? Angie, that is a fantastic question. Uh, I was just talking to some of the bird department about this. It has been roughly 15 years since San Antonio Zoo has had a whooping crane hatch but we are very hopeful and we will keep you updated in the near future about how they're doing. Juan is asking, do y'all have any volunteer work? We do accept volunteers or what we call docents here at the zoo. We are not accepting volunteers, new volunteers right now. This is currently being limited to our essential staff that are here and caring for the animals, but we've had a lot of offers for volunteers and we greatly appreciate that. We appreciate everyone's support and their drive to come and help us out. And like I said right now, the best way that you can help us out is by donating to our emergency relief fund. We've got a few questions. How do you get to work at the zoo? That was a good question. Uh, so it depends on what department you would like to work in. But the best thing I can tell you is experience. If you want to work with the animals at the zoo, every person who works with the animals has a slightly different story. So I can't give you one black and white answer. Uh, it's very gray. Some people have gone to school for things like biology, zoology, uh, animal behavior, psychology, really a range of things. Some of my uh, best mentors in my career have actually not had degrees in animal related fields. They have maybe transferred from another type of um, career prior to. So it really just depends. A lot of people move over from being docents or um, doing internships. You can intern here at San Antonio Zoo. You just have to check that out on our website under our education link. We have an application for internships. And you can do internships really at most zoological facilities. Some of the great places to intern or to volunteer are your local rescue groups, wildlife rehabbers. They're always looking for more people, just as we are as well. Uh, but there are so many ways to gain that experience. And a lot of it is, is luck and timing too. It really just depends. So uh, you can work at the zoo a lot of different ways. All right, we'll walk this little loop and then we will wrap it up because I think we're going a little long here. Oh yeah. I'm beating Craig on the length of time for Facebook Lives. Craig and I are now going to have a competition of who can talk the longest. Although he's still winning because he talks about one animal and there's so much knowledge and so much passion coming there. Whereas I'm kind of cheating because I've, I'm using the whole zoo as my, my muse. <laughs> <laughs> taco money yes we love we love tacos we love food uh, we're animal animal staff animal keepers have this we have internal jokes that really should be world known we also will work for food <laughs> but donating to the zoo and and making sure that we have everything that we need to do our jobs to the best of our abilities is really the most important thing um, so actually we'll end here we're at bistro bistro is kind of our main Place. In fact, I'll be super cheesy and I'm going to jump right in here. Anybody that saw this and thought it was broken like I did at first, I was schooled very quickly. This is Leap and you get to be the L. And so that's what I'm inviting all of you to do at home is to leap for wildlife. That's love, engage, act, and protect. So again, thank you so much 
for joining me today and for wandering the zoo with me. If you enjoyed it, please let me know. If you didn't, I won't do another one of these and I will stay behind the camera and continue to allow our animal care specialists to share their animals and their passion. But if you liked it, let us know so that we can plan again to do more of this zoo. But until then, don't forget to leap, love, engage, act, and protect all of the animals. And check out our website, sazoo.org, where you can donate to our emergency fund. Again, anything helps. You can adopt an animal, like and share our Facebook videos, search all of our social media, share our story with your friends and your family, and just stay healthy, stay safe, and thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have a great day.